This is the multiple regression module on covariate adjustment. To review in an adjustment ap application, you have a primary predictor or predictors, and what you want to do is generate the best possible impact estimate of the impact of those predictors. For example, in a randomized trial, you want to estimate the impact of the intervention after controlling for various other variables. Possible reasons to control for these variables are, are one, to reduce bias in case there were imbalances between the study groups despite the presence of randomization, and two, to increase precision by including variables that are strong predictors of the outcome, and thus reducing the amount of noise in the statistical tests. Essentially the same argument holds for observational studies, and for those studies bias is more often an issue than it is for randomized trials. How to assess the intervention is simple. Use a partial F test. The reduced model for this test includes all the covariates, and the full model includes those same covariates plus the primary predictor of interest. In the results, what to report is typically an adjusted regression coefficient, that is, the coefficient for the primary predictor within the multi-predictor regression model, a confidence interval, p-value, and an interpretation of clinical significance. In other words, you should report exactly what you've been reporting all along. The coefficient is interpreted as accounting for the impact of all the other variables in the model. You usually say a bit less about the covariates. In particular, you usually don't discuss their clinical significance. Reasoning from first principles, you might or might not choose to report the results of an unadjusted analysis. Reporting the unadjusted analysis is the norm in the randomized trial community, as this tends to reassure clinical readers that the covariate adjustment hasn't meaningfully changed the estimate effect just made it more precise. It's always good practice to report the amount of variation accounted for by the model. Indeed, sometimes analysts report the R-squared for both the full and reduced model, thus providing another type of insight about how much of an impact the primary predictor has. Here's some sample text that illustrates what to say in the statistical section of the manuscript. One thing that's important to communicate to your audience is how you select the covariates. I'll say more about this in a moment. So note one thing that's unique to an adjustment application is how you go about choosing the covariates. Because they're of secondary importance, and because the goal of the analysis is to make the best possible estimate of the impact of the primary predictor, all things being equal, it's best to include as many covariates as possible. Indeed, the ideal thing is to be able to say that your selection is theoretically driven for example, based on an explicit conceptual model of what will affect the outcome variable. If the number of potential covariates is large relative to your sample size, it might be reasonable to apply a variable selection algorithm to the covariates. If you do this, don't include the primary predictor in the algorithm. One thing to be careful about is that your covariates don't contain a surrogate for your primary predictor variable. For example, if your primary predictor is a measure of cardiac function, and you already have ejection fractions to covariate, the ejection fraction will already have explained most of the variation due to cardiac function, and your primary predictor won't really have a chance to be declared statistically significant. Using a formal analytical framework will help, will help you avoid making this type of error. Similarly, don't include covariates that are intermediate in the causal pathway from the primary predictor to the outcome. This problem was illustrated in another video. One final select variable selection issue pertains to interactions. There's nothing stopping you from including interaction variables among your primary predictors. These interactions could conceivably be, be between two or more of the covariates, or be between the primary predictor variable and the covariates. In practice, though, interactions are often limited to those involving the primary predictor. For example, in a randomized trial, the interaction, the interaction of the intervention and gender would address whether the impact of the intervention is consistent across gender. The impact of intervention of age would assess whether the impact of the intervention is consistent across age, and so forth. 